Management Unified Communications and Content Service for Northwestern Mutual. On behalf of the Enterprise Connect team, thank you for joining us today, Carrie. Thank you very much, Ryan. I'm really excited to uh, talk on this very important, timely topic with everybody today. So I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, I, we're, we're glad to have you. And, and before we really get into like the heart of the, the conversation today, I was wondering if we could just open up, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe your role at Northwestern Mutual and maybe why diversity and inclusion is such an important topic for you. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, happy to do so. So my primary role is in technology. Um, so I've got, uh, uh, we're getting some feedback noise. If, if you have some uh, audio going on, please mute that. <laughs> That's kind of the day and age now as we're working remotely. That's perfectly okay. Um, yeah, uh, back to a little bit about me. Um, I have been in the technology space for many, many years. So um, currently I've got accountability for our, our back end content services teams. You know, had a long stint with Unified Communication. As of March of this year, you know, most recently, I also took on accountability of our workplace portals, uh, digital products. That being said, even though my formal title is not traditionally diversity and inclusion, I do work very closely with our partners in HR, specifically the diversity and inclusion team, to make sure that we are doing everything possible as leaders and hiring managers to have and create a safe space for having a diverse workforce. Um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, it's been something that has shown values in many different ways that we'll talk about. Um, but hopefully each of you on this call, I think it's important to really understand, learn, and lean into the opportunity that we have in front of us. I think that, that that's wonderful. And I, I think it's diversity is, is such an important topic that it's, it's really, you know, everyone's now being a part of that conversation. So it's like, you don't have to be in an HR to be a part of the conversation. And we need all different roles and responsibilities to, to make an inclusive uh, workplace. Absolutely. So I wanted to start today's converse, conversation kind of with a look back at Enterprise Connect 2019. You spoke on a panel about the topic of diversity and inclusion in the workplace. Uh, it's a little over a year now, and it's fair to say that a lot has changed. Um, given that, what would you say the state of diversity and inclusion is in today's enterprise? Has there been a lot of change, or do we still have a lot of work to do? <laughs> what a loaded topic, right? <laughs> so, yeah, there's, it's, it's 2020 in a nutshell. There's a lot, a lot to unpack. Yeah, I think... Um, Trying to find the right adjective for a lot of change is, is something I'm, we've all struggled with, right? I heard people say new normal, but I don't even think there is a new normal as the situation day to day continues to be very different and fluid. So uh, looking back at 2019, you know, I was fortunate enough to be on a panel with two representatives. Their full time job was diversity and inclusion. Um, so really looking at the market, understanding the needs that we have. Um, with all the shifts in our world, um, racial injustices, the things happening with working from home with, with the virus, um, everything has really, I think, made people look at um, diversity not only as um, a nice to have, but it's essential. It's essential for everyone working um, across the globe to understand that the, the companies we represent and the environments that we create need to be welcoming, they need to be safe, so people can bring their whole selves to work. Um, you know, it's so important that people feel um, productive, they feel heard, and that they feel that they're adding value in an organization in a way that is embraced. So in terms of, um, you know, how our environment has changed, I mean, you can see brands, right, all over 100-year brands now pivoting to either rebranding themselves looking at the way they've gone to market, not knowing um, they may have come across in an insensitive way. Um, also, you know, big companies, I think, are taking huge strides forward and I would say really leading um, other organizations in what they're doing around the diversity initiatives. I know Ryan and I, when you and I talked earlier, Goldman Sachs put out a statement uh, stating they would not even work with IPO potential candidates without diverse board member, and then next year, they're requiring that their board members have at least two person, two people on that 
board leadership team that are considered diverse representatives. So um, other brands I know have come out more vocally in what they're doing around this initiative. Um, I'd be interested to hear the folks on the call if um, your brands have been a little more quiet in planning versus big, broad statements. Yeah, and if, if anyone wants to chime in, um, you know, I, I think maybe a good uh, step would be to just introduce yourself and then maybe your company and uh, your role. But uh, at any time, you know, we're going to keep the conversation going, but we uh, welcome anyone to, if you don't want to do it on video, no pressure for video, um, ask a question in the chat and uh, we'd love to get your perspective on this issue. So. So that said, did did anyone have anything to kind of chime in with uh, in terms of what their specific companies are doing? I think we'll maybe get the conversation going a little bit, and hopefully, some people um, will will have some feedback. So I, I think well, Ryan, to that point, I think um, I'll chime in there. So one of the things that we did very quickly in our organization with all the racial um, injustices that were going on is we had very candid feedback sessions uh, with a diverse set of people across the company and those sessions were set up in a way that people could feel comfortable speaking their truth um, comfortable raising the concerns or their day-to-day -day experiences telling stories that many people may not be aware of or known about um, educating our workforce about things that are considered microaggressions things that others may not know are coming across as insensitive or coming across um, in a way that's not making others feel welcome and comfortable. Um, so we really doubled down on our initiatives. Some of our partners spoke up as well about what they're doing on the local level. So I know it's been a, a huge focus for us this year. Yeah, and I, I think it's it's just so much in the, the, the forefront of people's minds that even if you're not a uh, a, a professional that talks about or that focuses in diversity and inclusion, you kind of see everything that's going on in the world and you go into the job and you still have that with you. And, you know, you, you need spaces that you could speak openly and freely. Absolutely. And kind of going off of that, I, I would imagine that, you know, enterprises that are just kind of looking at this issue, not, I mean, a lot have are continuing to look at this, that they they might be a little confused on what type of first steps you mentioned um, having listening sessions, but I what would what else would we be doing and um, education? What type of resources should enter enterprises be looking at? Yeah, that's a great question, Ryan. So in my experience, you know, changing the culture of an organization depending on where your organization is. Um, some are very conservative, long-standing organizations that take a long time for that culture to shift. Um, others may be newer and more agile, a little bit leaner that can pivot and, and make changes very quickly. I think that really depends on your, your leadership, the size of your organization, maybe even where you are geographically and the acceptance for, for others that are different. Um, in our uh, circumstance, we actually created a 15-year diversity inclusion roadmap that started many years ago. Um, but you know, the first part of it was really educating, right? A lot of us aren't aware of all the unconscious bias that we may carry. Um, and so we had a series of educational opportunities for people to attend. Um, both remotely but in person in a way that was non-threatening, but yet really opened the eyes to others' experiences on the ground. I would start there um, in educating folks, but then really empowering others to be not only leaders in the space, but allies. So we have a, a campaign going right now, very similar to others in the world, where we see something, say something. So if you're seeing terminology being used that may be considered offensive, uh, or a microaggression, it's important for allies to call that out and just redirect to things that are more inclusive. Um, I know we have an initiative right now going on with our customer service representatives to include language and pronouns that don't assume people have a certain orientation or even a certain uh, gender. So those are, are things that are actively going on right now. Yeah, and there's there seems like just even simple simple things you could do in your email signature, um, putting your pronouns, or you know, and that's you know, it, it it's I think sometimes it's those small things that really matter for people. 
Absolutely. And just, you know, opening up the door, allowing people to ask questions is really important. Like we're all in our own journeys. We all make mistakes. None of us knows exactly what to do, but having that candid, vulnerable dialogue with each other, um, asking questions, I think is the first step. So we've, we've been fortunate. We've had some very courageous people step up and allow others to ask questions about uh, proper terminology, things to say, you know, how do you approach certain situations? It's that dialogue that's been really powerful and being vulnerable enough to say, you know, I, I don't really understand. I made a mistake. I want to correct it. I want to get better. Um, and then taking the ownership to um, really focus on your own learning journey and mm -hmm. not expecting others of that affinity group to teach us, right? I know that's a lot. Um, a lot of that is in the news right now as well. Um, empowering your own journey. Oh, and uh, I, I see a, a question already or just came in, and it was actually the next question I was going to ask. And now we, we were kind of talking broad, broadly on, uh, you know, what enterprises can do kind of from an organizational standpoint, but I wanted to kind of drill down a little bit into IT departments. Um, you know, it, it, is there any, any recommendations that you have for developing a more diverse IT department? And in terms of recruiting and fostering talent, uh, how do hiring managers and enterprise leaders kind of look at, you know, how do, how do we create a diverse workforce? Like what, do they, what, what should they consider? Right, so great question. I know this is a, an issue our, our entire uh, enterprise has been trying to tackle for several years. How do we get other folks interested in, in STEM technologies and IT specifically? So one of the things we've done on the local level is we've partnered with schools, starting even at the grade school level and the middle school level with programs targeted at focusing on STEM initiatives. They can include an on-site in-classroom um, fun learning opportunity as well as mentors, setting up others with people that look like them so they know that there is a future career for them in these technology spaces. Um, another thing that we have tried to emphasize is when looking at talent, I think it's important to evaluate talent on resumes that come in without names. So if you're looking specifically um, just skills and experiences, we all have an implicit bias that we have, right or wrong, it's just, you know, we tend to hire people like us. So taking the names off resumes and specifically just looking at the skills and experiences might give you a different perspective. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, um, if you really want to promote that type of diversity in your team, you have to be conscious and just lean into understanding what makes that person unique and individual and making a point to, to have your team with those types of people. Yeah, it seems like so interconnected that the, you know, just having the open conversations, having the education, um, that it just kind of all kind of works to, and I, I think it's it's that that effort that you really want to put out there and then everything just kind of follows. Right. And I, I think there's there's also in terms of, um, you know, maybe, maybe I, I should pause here. Does anyone, you know, have a, a question or would like to chime in with any, any comments about the topic of, um, you know, IT departments and creating a diverse workforce? Um, you know, we have 30, 34 people now in here. So if I would, I would love to hear uh, some of some other people's perspectives. And no pressure. <laughs> and I see that there's a couple uh, things in the chat. I'm just gonna look at them really quickly. So I have a question. This is Grace. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so I, I, I guess I like the idea and I work for an organization that have, has been championing um, diversity and inclusiveness and lately it's been a lot of, you know, how do we become anti-racist, right? How do we kind of demonstrate the values? But still, when you look at the IT organization, it's very male dominated, um, right? It doesn't, hasn't quite transformed into uh, that perspective. And um, for, for me, I think as a female, it's about, um, you know, some of the feedback that I get is I'm not either assertive enough or I don't have that type of standing. And I don't think that's always necessary in the day-to-day -day IT business, right? So just curious if there's some guidance and things that kind of help everyone on, you know, how do you go on this journey where, you know, 
have to be a male participant, but what are some of the express right the value that you bring to an organization? Yeah, I, I you you cut out just a little bit, but I think we we kind of we got the um the gist of what you're saying that you know IT has has been you know hasn't been as inclusive and diverse as it as it could be. And and so Carrie, what what to that? How 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 do you broach that? Yeah, so that's very common, right, in our organization to have those types of comments about um, folks that are not um, of the the majority. One of the things um, I've leaned into, especially with folks on my team that are considered diverse, find an ally. If you have a senior leader that is, let's say, a white male. And there was things like that coming up. One of the questions I always challenge people on is, would you say that if they were a, a male? Would you have that same perspective about assertiveness um, that you mentioned? Uh, have someone in the room that can speak up for you. I know that I was in a session with Microsoft. Um, I was trying to make a point with a gentleman who, who cut me off and basically talked over me. And my senior leader, who is a, a male, stepped right in and said, let her finish. So it's having the, well, it's clear. Um, my earlier point about if you see something, say something, it's those types of actions that go a huge way in changing the culture um, and changing the way people perceive how 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 you need to be in this field and in your company. So I would encourage you to talk to folks of influence that have those those levels that can kind of set the tone for the rest of the organization. And. Yeah, that, that was a great answer. And I, I, I think that, yeah, just the, the see something, say something is, is just so cru crucial. And we also have a, a question on the chat, and we I think we touched a little bit uh, on it, uh, but the kind of the lack of opportunities um, for in, in enterprise IT of, you know, it's, it's still, you know, a, a very, it's not as diverse as it could be. So, you know, is it, is it, are there other opportunities like uh, the mentorship you were you were talking about and other programs like that? I think that 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 would help a lot of people out. Yeah, I think mentoring is is one thing, and then understanding not only the technical skills but just you know the corporate culture. Like others spoke to it. How do you interact with your colleagues? You know what's kind of the norm, and making sure that that norm is shifting in a way that feels okay and inclusive. If you're the only one like you you are gonna feel a little bit um, strange or you know, not fitting in with the rest of the group. So uh, one of the things that really struck me last year with this session, I was um, grateful enough to present with LaFawn Davis, who's now the Vice President of Indeed's Diversity Inclusion Initiative. And something she said really stuck with me. She said, if you want diverse teams, hire diverse talent, period. Um, and you know that takes some, some work, you have to lean into it, you have to be intentional about it. But once you start to do that, I think culturally your, your teams tend to blend and tend to shift um, and things, like I said, it's not going to happen overnight. This is a this is a thing that takes time and you have to have your entire organization bought into this vision. Yeah. And I, I yeah, it's, it seems so much going back to just just starting it and it will just kind of build on on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say even in our organization, while we have been committed to this and have had a roadmap, our mix is not probably that much better than other organizations in terms of our diversity in IT. I would say it still tends to be largely male, largely Caucasian overall, but it is gradually shifting. So it takes time. And and kind of going to that shift, I, I mean, 2020 has been, I think for everyone, been just kind of this crazy weird year. But I think there's there's this these silver linings with with this this new switch to remote working and working from home is that with enterprises pivoting to to remote first uh, workforce that that for people that are hiring or looking for diverse talent their their opportunities have just expanded that you don't have to look you know twenty five miles out of you know whichever branch office you could really look all over the globe. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that and how how people that are in charge of hiring might be able to think of um, hiring talent differently in this, this age of COVID. Yeah, I think that's a great point too, Ryan. So 
obviously those are the phone that our people leaders are hiring talent. We've had to quickly pivot. How do you interview someone remotely? How do you evaluate their skill set and get them onboarded um, in a remote situation? While that's had its own set of challenges, I do think there is really a silver lining. There's a lot of highly talented people that unfortunately may be getting furloughed due to the current uh, economic situation. And we always had a barrier um, on folks not wanting to relocate. We're located in the Midwest. Um, some of the top talent that wants to remain in large cities around the coast are now open to us and, and are able to work and join our team and be effective immediately. So that, that really is a silver lining. I think the, the question there becomes, Will that be the norm going forward or will there be um, other shifts that we're going to make in the future? So the expectations we've been setting up with candidates working remotely is just opening up the door for quarterly in-person visits when needed, you know, large planning events, things, strategic planning that we want to do in person when possible, um, making sure they're open to that. But yeah, the relocation of key talent to our organization being removed has really given us this huge opportunity to hire talent that being said obviously now there's more competitiveness with talent so i think making sure that your remote um, onboarding experience is smooth as much as it can be uh, making sure people feel included and engaged um, that's always another thing where you've got to put in extra effort to make sure that happens yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's so many of those other issues associated with remote working. And I would imagine the onboard process for any employee right now would be very interesting. Um, you know, I, I wanted to pause right there and see again, if, if anyone in the audience uh, wanted to participate, like I said, you could either do a chat or uh, just, just chime in. Um, we'd really like to hear feedback on hiring or any, any of the other topics we discussed today. No pressure. <laughs> I still got plenty of questions. <laughs> All right. Um, and I, I think I think we kind of talked about this this loosely. Uh, but why why does this matter so much? I think we 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 tend to think that it's you know it's it's definitely the right thing to do, and we want to have a diverse um, workforce. But what what's I hate to say it, but what's kind of the benefit for businesses and enterprises, um, it, you know, specifically for IT, you know, how do you, you know, what, are there any benefits for that? Yeah. So, you know, first and foremost, when people feel that they're part of a team and they feel safe to bring their whole selves to work, obviously they're, they're a more productive employee, morale goes up across the board, you have happier, more well-functioning teams. You know, that's first and foremost. But that being said, um, I do know there has been several studies on diversity and actually proven um, that having a diverse workforce does improve your bottom line. Um, I pulled out a study done by the Boston Consulting Group. Um, so this study was done in 2018 and found that um, companies that have diverse management teams have a 19% higher revenue due to the innovation that that creates. So when people feel comfortable um, to bring new creative and fresh ideas, they feel like they're in a safe, diverse environment that definitely has benefits, not only to overall employee morale, but also in the company bottom line. So I know a lot of organizations that read this study are doubling down for that reason, but it shouldn't be just for the bottom line, obviously. You want a workforce um, that respects each other, period. Yeah, and I, I think that's just so much of, you know, the, the world that we live in, that there's, you know, we're, you know, there we come from different backgrounds. We have, you know, different beliefs and stuff. And that that, that, that really should be a part of who we are when we walk in the door, or in this case, now that we're working from home or, you know, logging into video meetings, that you should be able to bring that in there. Um, and I had, I, I did have one question from the chat um, specifically around the gender pay gap. And I thought that, you know, we, we kind of are talking broadly, but uh, I think that was a very interesting specific question. So uh, do you have, uh, yeah, what, what, what's have you been seeing around the, the, the business world in terms of closing that gender gap and the pay gap? Yeah, there, um, there was a, a young, a young woman that I know asked for an anonymous survey of people to submit 
salaries, right? And it was published very broadly about the gender pay gap. So I know a lot of senior leaders, especially in the tech organization, are looking at this. She worked for one of the big firms. I don't remember if it was Google, Apple, or Amazon, but it, I think it really opened the eyes of many, many people. Um, so one of the things I know we've done on a local level is remove names, but just specifically look at job titles, uh, genders, and, and salary ranges, and push people if we felt there was some inequities going on. Um, that's something that I know transparency in that has been a, a really hot topic, a very, uh, very touchy situation for others, but um, I know there is, um, Hi, Jana. Are committed to it. There can be a big focus there. Got it. And um, and kind of this is a question okay. I have. Yes, um, I do plan to show. Oh, I, I think someone is. We're going. Oh, to I do plan feedback. to come in. We're getting a little feedback. All right, I think we're I think I we're good now. <laughs> um, it, it kind of going off of that. I I think that you know diversity and inclusion is just kind of one topic, but there's so many of those yeah. different offshoots that there's, uh, you know, issues related to uh, sexual orientation, uh, race, religion. So how do you, it, it kind of yeah. seems like a lot for an enterprise that's really trying to revamp their diversity and inclusion program. So how do you take all, everything into account more or less? That's a great question. I think it's really important to acknowledge, like okay. you said, right, all the different dimensions of diversity, right? You, um, gender, culture, religious beliefs, um, generational differences, disabilities, you know, so many different aspects. And I think it's important to acknowledge all the different aspects. But it, what comes right down to it, you can't tackle everything all at once. Mm -hmm. so I think it's important to make sure you have um, a broad a broad base of options, but if you need to focus with one, I think having that conversation across your leadership team on where do we literally want to push focus. I know over the last several years, we've targeted one, maybe two of the specific um, the specific characteristics that I called out earlier to really put extra focus and extra investment to make sure that we're doubling down on that aspect. Um, so obviously part of the world um, influences that. Where's the hottest item that we need to put more energy and focus? Mm -hmm. So it changes and shifts, but I think it also, um, having strong leadership in your organization that believes in this is, is the core. Because without that, you can do things on the grassroots level and you can advocate and educate, but if it's not coming from the top down, um, I, I would think you are gonna have a harder road to really make some movement. Yeah, I think it's 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 kind of those those two things hand in hand that the, the leadership and having those conversations and the education and all that and it just like like I keep saying it keeps kind of building on itself. It does. And we did have a question and I uh, it it seems uh in the in the chat that I think is is kind of interesting especially in terms this kind of goes out of, outside of uh diversity and inclusion just a little bit but I think really does relate specifically for, for today, but um, we have a, a question in the chat. How are large companies making um, access to mental health services um, more accessible? Um, I mean, yeah, 2020, I mean, you, you, you read the news and there's there's issues around mental health that are on the rise. And that that that's another aspect that, you know, it's it's your, your ability and, you, you know, to, come to the workplace healthy physically and mentally. So I was wondering if you could touch a little bit on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I can speak to what what we've done locally. You know, we have really communicated and marketed the services that we offer to our employees. Not only that, but um, allowing visibly being vulnerable and letting people know that it is OK. Like everybody's going through this unprecedented time of change that is impacting everybody's mental health to some way, shape or form. You know, those trying to homeschool children, take care of parents, we know. Um, I think one of the things that you can do on a local level is set the tone with your teams. Let them know that the expectations that you have for them, everybody is understanding that you may have a child need, you may have to work a little bit different hours. Um, your professionals, let them open the door to let them reach out to you to, to talk through what they need. 
Um, and if you feel like the mental health services in your organization are not sufficient, you know, raise that up to your leadership chain, but also look locally. I know there's a lot of other services from nonprofits that are being offered. Um, our disability ERG, for example, had a session focused on mental health and opening up that, like I mentioned earlier, the stories of vulnerability, having someone talk about this openly, you know, this, this specific topic used to be something we didn't address very much. And now it's definitely on par with any kind of regular medical issue. I'm um, treated just in an equitable fashion, which I think is remarkable. So that is something that, you know, don't lose sight of it, especially working remotely. I know that we've had some concerns about certain people that are alone, right? They don't have families and that that feeling of isolation can do a number on people's mental health as well. Check in with your teams, open the door. I know with everybody's calendars being so jammed, I've tended to just have an open drop in office hours. Come in if you want, it's optional, but I'm here if you just want to chat or you need somebody to talk to or you're just at home alone and don't know what to do, come on in. I mean, as leaders, I know we're stretched really thin, but I've made a point of um, making that time something that's not blocked off. It's just, it's reserved for my team um, that they can chat. Yeah, and I think, and once again, another little flip side to the this new remote working um, situation is, you know, people are getting really creative on, in terms of ways of connecting with coworkers. So, you know, there's virtual happy hours and stuff. So uh, can you speak to that, that a little bit, like the technology component and how, you know, how people are using it in fun and interesting ways? Yeah, I think all of us probably have some very interesting stories, right, about um, the Zoom meetings or, or sharing after work in a social setting. You know, our, our unified communication space, specifically that technology, I think is evolving very quickly. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, you know, as we've gone through thinking about ways to keep people engaged and have these happy hours, I think they become a little bit uh, repetitive and stale. So I think one of the things we're looking to experiment with is, is this online virtual world where you can have conversations with people that are just random. They're not scheduled. You bump into somebody in a world. And it may fail and it may be horrible, but, you know, we're kind of just testing things out and seeing what makes stick or what makes people feel a little bit better about closing that gap of, hey, I don't see so-and-so in the lunchroom anymore. I didn't bump into so-and-so in the hallway. And having those happy accidents, if you will, right. um, where you, you connect on a topic and something comes out of it that's really beneficial. So I think a lot of people have expressed across all organizations missing that that ability to connect with others that aren't in your local workspace. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's something I, I definitely miss is just those kind of, you know, you, you see someone, oh, how was the football game on Sunday and, and stuff like that. And I think that, the, you know, that might be a, a, a side issue in terms of diversity and inclusion, but I think it's still a part of it that, you know, you, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we're kind of getting, a, uh, we only got like about 10 minutes. So I, I just wanted to open up the floor again. Anyone that, you know, had a question on anything we discussed or would like to say or make a comment or question on something that we haven't touched on, you know, feel free to to chime up. I, this is a little bit like last call. Um, so, yeah, we'd love to hear some feedback. I think a lot of people were using the chat. So, um, you know, I, 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 I use that to kind of say the question. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I really don't have too much more uh, to say. Was there anything that you wanted to end with, uh, Carrie? Yeah, I guess my call out to this group that took the time to talk about this really important topic today, my ask of you would be to listen. Just listen, 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 listen more. Listen when you can, ask questions, be vulnerable. Uh, we don't always say the right thing or do the right thing. I know when um, all the, the riots, the injustice riots had started, I sat all day trying to figure out the right words to say. And at the end of the day, I just apologized and said, I'm not going to say the right words, but I thought it was important to say something. For those of you that are being affected by this, they're experiencing this at a very emotional level. So um, empathize with others that may be going through just uber challenging situations at home. Um, listen to your team. Uh, know that you you are there for them and have empathy for what everybody is dealing with remotely. I think that's really important. 
Yeah, I think listening to people and empathy, and I, I think everyone's, it seems like everyone's heart is kind of in the, the right place that, you know, we want to, we really want to dev develop a, a more diverse and inclusive workforce in the enterprise, in, in IT departments and outside. So I think it's, yeah, I think that, that was that was great and well said. <laughs> yeah, and just, you know, all of us, the more that you learn about unconscious biases that we have, the more eye-opening it is. You know, you don't know what you don't know until it is pointed out and you learn. So do lean into that. It's important. Absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Um, I, I would like to thank everyone that took some time out to talk about this very important uh, subject. Uh, we've, you know, th this is the first time we've done this in a virtual format. And I, I found it very insightful. And there's, you know, I have tons of notes while I'm also trying to speak. So I, I really thank everyone that, that took the time, that took their lunch hour, to to talk about this so i would like to thank you again carrie for joining us today and uh your insight was great and my pleasure <laughs> thank you it's great to have you again on the enterprise connect uh stage so <laughs> and uh yeah this 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 recording would be uh made available at a later time on no jitter and the enterprise connect youtube so we encourage you uh, to share this video with colleagues or anyone that might be interested. And thank you again for just joining the session and please enjoy the rest of the, the show. So thank you and please take care. Thanks, Ryan. Oh, thanks. <laughs>